All right, ladies and gentlemen. So I've talked a lot in this video series about how these can break. And I had mentioned in one other video series that I had one identical to this shatter on me. Now this one didn't shatter initially. Uh, in fact, it's a real shame because I just today fine tuned the final elements of the shelf and dialed it in, shot a video with it. It was perfect. Uh, because it's now finished, I wanted to check its final poundage. So I, I put it to 41 pounds, which is not that much. I've drawn it a lot harder than that. It's, uh, it was a 60 pound bow, but that just means it was kind of ready to give. And I knew I was actually thinking about it. I didn't actually bevel this down any more than I had, but I mean, you have to take a fair bit out of here. Um, and they are under a lot of strain and eventually with a higher poundage bow, they will give. It's like anything else. I mean, a hockey stick, even though it's really strong carbon fiber, it's being flexed a lot and under a lot of pressure as soon as you apply pressure to it like this. I mean, this isn't a light bow. And so eventually the riser is going to break, which is why I told you if you're going to use one of these as a survival bow, you need to carry a backup riser. Uh, and the, this is why, because these are not a factory bow, guys. This is a DIY project. Um, and while this has been my favorite one, uh, I am very much still in the experimental testing phase. And you can see when this popped, it really popped. I mean, this whole block came out, but it's a very solid construction and the whole thing didn't collapse. It didn't explode. It didn't injure me. It just cracked. And as soon as I put the weight on it right here, which is where my hand would be and started picking it up, this whole section just gave. Uh, and that tells me it was close and it wouldn't have had very many shots left in this world. But uh, this is part of uh, doing this kind of a thing. I learn a lot and I experiment. Uh, I am not sad at all about having built this and I don't feel like I really made a mistake. It's not that. It's more that no matter what I do, now there are things I could have done to make it stronger and I did say to you that you're going to need to do that. And as usual on my channel, I generally tell you the right way to do it, but don't do it that way right away. Uh, and this is why, because I knew eventually it would show you that, which is one of the reasons why I didn't use my favorite one of these right away. Uh, I actually kept my favorite ones aside and started taking ones that were okay and would look okay on camera and all that, but were basically, you know, ones I could do without. Because I have a ton of risers made, guys. A ton, ton, ton. Uh, from different sticks at different stiffnesses. Now, this is some of the stiffest material that you can get in a hockey stick. But in the middle, where the handle is, is generally among the more flexible portions of that stick. If you want the stiffest end, you need the end down near the tip. Um, the middle section tends to be pretty flexible. So they're, they're varying their stiffness from end to end. Uh, and it's taught me a lot. Uh, this section, if I remember correctly, was out of the middle. Uh, towards the top, which is actually a bad place to take a riser from if you're going to put it under this kind of pressure. Also, as I talked about early on, I did not soak this with epoxy or anything else. And you can see that here. This is dry wood. Okay, that's really bad. This part here that was epoxied really solid, it's, it's what I said. It came out really strong. And in the end, this isn't the part that gave. Even when it all popped out, it still didn't give. It held exactly where it was inside the riser because it was solid. Again, the bottom didn't have any problem. It stayed rock solid. It was just right here. And that means when you build this, even though it was a solid block, and you can see that at one time it was, it's shattered right through. Um, what you would need to do, and this is what I'm going to do for the next one, is make a wood block, soak it in thinned epoxy or something similar, to harden the whole piece of wood after I've shaped it, after I've made it, then slide it into place, epoxy it all into place, let it sit for a full 24 hours, then test my shelf. Now at this point, I have fine-tuned this and dialed this in and adjusted this, not only for my fletchings, but for standard fletchings. Um, and now that I know exactly how I want to build it, this prototype has taught me everything that I need to know. Not only that, it was a spectacularly good bow and the limbs remain intact, which means I can reuse those and they're already set up and dialed in. 
In fact, it means I could just put them into another riser right now and put them back into service, but I'm not going to do that because knowing what I know now, I know that if I do that, it's just going to break. So allow me to show you one that's similar, but I've never had one break like this. These riser bows, the limb, don't forget the limb ends right here, which is putting this part of the bow under huge pressure because it doesn't run all the way through. It has a pressure point here. And unfortunately it's right at the point where you're thinning it out as well. Now, had I made the pressure point up here, this part would give because it wouldn't have enough space here to lock it in. It needs a certain distance into the riser to really lock it in solid. And it's right to about here on this end. There's only about that inch between these two limbs and it needs that bit too. So it's like I could have, what I should have done actually is drilled this limb deeper down so it almost touched the other one and then made the top limb longer to accommodate that so that as it comes out the riser, they'll be the same rough length with the top a little bit uh, softer, which is a tiny bit longer uh, so that it can, maybe a quarter inch or so is usually enough uh, so that it bows a little more favorably. And in the end, it's a great formula. It works awesome, but I only partially did that. I only did it at the ends and you can see how much of a difference that made from treated properly rock solid stuff to soft wood and a riser that wasn't treated now again once you hard it's all in the wood block because once the wood block is made correctly you won't be putting this under so much torsion you just won't so i'm going to pull this one apart and uh i'm going to show you the next version of this bow and i'll show you why i like it It is under construction and has already been test fired and all that kind of stuff. And so this is one of the prettier ones. It goes with my green set. I, I may have showed you guys this one in a previous video. I don't know if it'll be uploaded because there's I, I just looked through and I had to delete so many guys. There's so many I've shot. Now this one, I had put a little piece of plastic here and glued it and shot it until that came out. Uh, and I actually found it was really good. It was shooting really nice. Um, very accurate, but I want to redo the shelf, install a pin, fine tune it, adjust it. I got to take out all this crap, but I used a lot of epoxy. So now, even though this was soft, it's rock hard. And this is what I'm telling you. If you get that 50-50 epoxy mix really perfectly right, it ends up being perfectly right. If you don't have a perfect 50-50 mix, it won't be really hard like this. But this is one of the reasons why it's better. Uh, also, these end caps, I made them so I could just slide them up and get to it, partly because I slide these ones up and put a sight underneath if I want to shoot there. But I decided on this one, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to remove these caps and seal them off with epoxy like I showed the other ones. But this one is one rod that goes all the way through the far end of it. And that is better because it braces it here and here. But also, it doesn't put as much pressure here where you're thinning it. In fact, it puts pretty equal pressure across the whole thing. And because I shoot it this way, I love this shape. If you guys can see that, it's kind of concave right here. So it arches in and it fits my knuckles perfectly. So I used that shape to make it so that when I'm holding my bow, it comes out automatically to the perfect line. And I really, really like that. Uh, it also is made of a grip material that makes it very comfortable. Also, uh, unlike the other one, I felt like it was a flaw that I had made my shelf at the top so narrow. I felt like I should have used a slightly longer um, riser. This one, as you can see, is significantly longer than that one was. Uh, and this one was six inches, this one's eight inches. And this is why, guys. You can see in my hand how much bigger this one is, but it makes me bow. It's bowing more towards the middle on this one. And they both came out very accurate, even though the shelf is not fine tuned on this one. It needs to be brought back further this way, but only a little bit. And I only want to do it as absolute little as I need to, to retain as much of this as is humanly physically possible. And so having it on the angle I do, it's actually quite perfect. And if I just put plastic here and push it back just a little, on this edge and just a little on this edge it'll have a lot more overall strength than the other one did uh 
by default because I won't be the other one. I brought it back right to about here. And when you look, it's only this part that's there on the other bow. And when you look, you'll see right away what I mean. It's cut out deep, deep, deep on both sides. And that didn't leave a lot of room around the back side. Whereas when you look at this one, it's set up on the corner. Whereas this one was set up like this, just about. It was a little offset, but not very much. And because it comes off the side, it does help a lot. So I maintain that. This one's nice because it's it really just comes to hand nicely. It should be a little more reliable than the other one in terms of its longevity. But the other one shot impeccably perfect. Uh, I really can't complain. I absolutely loved it. So given that it was my favorite takedown bow of all time, I will absolutely build another one. Um, but it has, I, I, I don't even want to hazard a guess as to how many arrows it's shot. I've tried this riser on half a dozen sets of limbs. I must have shot a thousand arrows with it at least over the last month since I built it month and a half ago. Um, maybe two months now. I think two months. Yeah, actually two months solid because I stopped making risers two months ago. I made them, uh, the three, and then just tested and tested and tested and tested and tested. Uh, two of those are still here and can be shot. Uh, this one obviously is no longer in that category, which is too bad because for the looks of the ones I did, it's one of my favorite ones. The other ones don't have the, uh, the limb stiffness or the quality of um, carbon fiber to be able to handle that. But this one does. This is a nice stiff carbon fiber. Now, my only complaint about this one is even though I haven't cut down the rod much and I left it all one piece, uh, because it is such a long piece, I should have gone an inch shorter and just or two maybe and just left it instead of a six inch or well, that one's like five and a half. I should have made this one like seven. And I think that would have been perfect. And the reason is it came out pretty high poundage. Uh, the other one was already really high poundage where it was firing shots that were, well, I only had to give it 23 inches to draw to fire, you know, pretty heavy arrows that are 500 spine and 29 and a half inch long, 6.2 mil carbon uh, with pretty heavy target tips. So, I mean, and broadheads. Um, so if it's doing that, you know, and running 60 pounds at the back end, Funny thing is, I had 41 pounds on it. It barely drew it out. I could see it wasn't going to draw it out very far. And then it gave, and all of a sudden it was done. And I was like, oh, man, that's so sad. I was just trying to figure out now that it's finalized what the final draw length was and the brace height and all that and show it empirically. And that was really too bad. So, um, yeah, I don't even know what to tell you. I mean, I wasn't even recording it. I just was doing it to see. And figured I'd report the details after on what its final was. And that's really sad. But at the same time, I knew from get-go and have been saying that these are not your forever bow. These are a, a quick DIY bow made out of the garbage. But I could have hunted with this bow fucking a hundred times. Literally, guys. And it was just fine up until the last. And it, it wasn't giving direct signs that it was going to go. I didn't notice any difference, but in the last, since I put these limbs on, I felt it crack here and looked here and could have swore I felt it give, but in the end, this is the result. These are going to have a limited lifespan and you'll see if you build one and you don't build it to the standards that I specify, there will be consequences, but if you do it right, these are awesome bows and they could last a lot longer than this one did. And that's the real funny thing. This one has actually been amazing. And just as long as it did, giving me shooting for months, hundreds of arrows and thousand arrows, and have it last that long for the hours uh, that it took to make it, 100% worthwhile. For the money invested, 1,000% worthwhile. A wonderful project, a wonderful build. And now I will make an identical one out of the exact same rod done out of... The exact same rod. I mean, you'll see it's the same pattern and the whole ball of wax. It's just from further down the rod, making it a stiffer section. In addition, I'm going to uh, treat the wood first, just like I showed you. I'll put these to the right lengths and make this the right length in the first place to give me the exact setup that I want and a strength that I need 
to give it proper longevity, guys. And at that point, it, it'll instead of lasting two months, it'll probably last six. If you shoot like I do every day and you're shooting 50, 60 arrows a day, then at least then and that's some days, not every day, but a lot of days it's like that. And every day I shoot at least a few. Generally, there's the odd day I miss, but it's rare. So this has fired a huge number of shots in the, uh, you know, 70 days or so that it's been around. Uh, and, and honestly, it's definitely fired like close to a thousand rounds because I've, I've, I've shot a lot, a lot, a lot with it. The pin came out very, very well. Everything here came out perfect. I mean, I really can't complain. The build itself, all the little details I learned about putting the rubber in, all of those I will repeat. They all came out really good. Super treating the ends with hardened epoxy and all that shit. Again, super good idea. The only thing I missed was treating the inside, the hard, all the way through the wood piece with thinned epoxy after I've shaped it. So what you need to do is put it together, shape it, and then the, uh, put it all together, soak it with hardened epoxy, and then dial it in from there and sand it if you have to. Uh, and re-soak the edge to uh, re-harden it and you'll be just fine. Um, that way, anywhere you sand, you're not leaving a weakened section of wood or exposing a fresh surface. You want to, uh, coat it all and make sure it's nice and coated evenly. And you'll find that it's much, much tougher guys, much, much more reliable. In fact, wood can be damn near bulletproof if you soak it with the right materials, guys. Keith that.